Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide and according to the World Health Organization it is a major contributor to the global burden of disease. Statistics have revealed that more women are affected by depression than men although men are not immune to the illness. We sat down with Dr. Jared Alden, a psychotherapist at the German Neuroscience Center in Dubai to find out more. Depression seems to be a mental disorder that many of us find difficult to talk about, despite the fact that it is a common illness worldwide, with the WHO estimating that around 350 million people are affected. Sadness, loss of interest or pleasure, feelings of guilt or low self-worth, disturbed sleep or appetite, feelings of tiredness and poor concentration are just some of the symptoms. However, how is clinical depression triggered? Uh, a particular person may manifest with more symptoms of agitation. Other people may notice that they're, they're very tearful and their mood is very low. Uh, other people uh, just might be almost... Um, like someone turned the switch off and just can't move. But those are not actually different kinds of depression. It, that all falls under the category of depression. It's just the uniqueness of each person, how they manifest it. But I would suspect that our diet has a, a big role in how our symptoms manifest. Uh, we're not eating very fresh foods, and we're not eating foods made at home. And I think that's a big shift from one generation to the next. And I often wonder if this has a contributing factor to how we see the symptoms of depression emerge. Another factor is we are fairly sophisticated these days health-wise. So most of us are aware of what our cholesterol level might be. We know what diabetes is. We're often uh, fairly good these days at, at kind of taking care of our physical health. Which means that we're going to therefore notice our mental health much more. Uh, the years ago, you know, my mom's generation, they wouldn't go into hospital for anything. That would be, <laughs> they would do anything to avoid that. Whereas now, even my mom, she will go to the doctors in a preventative way. And I think now, because that's a part of um, our lives, we therefore can see our mental health more clearly. Now you've already mentioned some of the symptoms, but how is this different from the usual mood fluctuations and emotional challenges that people face in everyday life? With the, the typical challenges in a daily life, you, you'll notice that um, your mood will shift. So let's say you're in traffic and who likes traffic? But once you're out of traffic and you're sitting in the office or at home, you forget about it. To, you, you know, your mood uh, goes back to a norm. Uh, you're able to laugh at people's jokes. You enjoy your favorite movie. Um, you have a great cup of coffee and, yeah, you just forget all about it. Uh, these are the typical fluctuations that we all have in our day. A, a person with depression doesn't enjoy the coffee. They are not able to talk themselves out of it, lift themselves out of it. What we notice with people with depression is they'll often bully themselves. Like, come on, come on, snap out of it. This is ridiculous. You know you're so lucky. You're so, and they, they kind of try and bully their way out, and it doesn't work. That's another way that we know that we're dealing with depression. Many people who are depressed are not always correctly diagnosed or do not recognize the symptoms, according to the WHO. So how is depression diagnosed by a medical professional, and is the diagnosis straightforward? Surprisingly, it is actually straightforward. It, uh, especially if you, you know, see, you know, if you've been doing it for a couple of years, you, you can quite quickly uh, tell when someone is depressed. Uh, what I notice, uh, and this does not stand up to scientific rigor, this is more what you might consider anecdotal experience from doing this for a number of years. You can often see how somebody moves, a slight delay in their facial muscles, their coordination will be a little bit off. And uh, it, it, very often, this is how depression affects a person, very physically. It, it, um, it, it really has quite a profound effect on the individual. So certainly how a person appears. Then we want to know, uh, whenever you visit any kind of medical professional, they're gonna wanna know three things intensity, frequency, and duration. 
and see when we look at a person's symptom, like I'd say sleep trouble, this is what we're going to want to know. When did it start? How bad is it? Uh, what's been the pattern? Uh, what have you tried to solve this problem yourself? And really with very few questions, you can really start to see that a person is stuck. After the break, we continue our conversation with Dr. Jared Alden. Welcome back. At its worst, depression can lead to suicide. And according to the World Health Organization, suicide results in an estimated 1 million deaths every year. Although there are known effective treatments for depression, fewer than half of those affected in the world, in some countries less than 10%, receive such treatments. So what types of treatments are offered? We continue our conversation with Dr. Jared Alden. This is where it gets very individualized. You know, there's a lot of people with depression, but a person's unique circumstances is really going to dictate what we're going to do. Uh, for example, let's say someone has a mild depression. The intensity is not very strong. The effects on their life are limited. Uh, so the, essentially the damage that is being caused is, is controlled as well. With a person like that, uh, very often we might offer medication. Uh, but of course, people are not you know, over the moon about taking medication, so they might say no. In those mild circumstances, we would say, okay, great. Let, let's work first on education because uh, if you're depressed, believe me, you're motivated, you want change. So if we give people the correct information, uh, giving people the, the best way to target their sleep trouble, uh, techniques to uh, work on um, realistic thinking, not just positive thinking, but realistic thinking, um, how not to overwork. Uh, many people have very good ways of dealing with depression, but they don't do it at the right time. So education absolutely is very important. See, because once again, we have a lot of information out there in the world that doesn't always translate into knowledge. What can I do in my case? And so coming to uh, an individualized kind of treatment can be very powerful. The UAE is not immune to these challenges, with some local reports suggesting that more than 4% of the population here are clinically depressed. So what are the support mechanisms in place in the UAE, and are the current awareness initiatives and services adequate? When it comes to health in general, uh, I think there's always room for improvement. It's, um, it's quite a, a, quite a a significant field. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I, I think probably in 50 years from now we'll, we'll also think that we can do better. And I think as our technology improves, our awareness improves, um, medical advances, we will always push that envelope. I think that's uh, kind of an, an, uh, a natural part of, of how, how it works. Uh, one of the things that I think is fantastic that we're doing here in Dubai is the mandatory insurance. Uh, this is going to improve the health of, of the UAE um, in a much stronger way. So I think that's excellent. Well, that brings us to the end of our program. If you would like to know more about any of the stories you have seen tonight, you can contact us at UAE Weekly at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04-367-2230. From myself and the entire team, have a wonderful week ahead.